Delissa Baxter. Delissa, hi. Can you tell me what's happening there? Yes, I just killed my daughter. Each a mother accused of stabbing her young daughter this morning, killing her. The scene is at an apartment complex on Northeast 163rd Street. How old is your daughter? Three. And how, how did you kill your daughter? I tried strangling her. That didn't work, so I stabbed her with a knife in the neck and chest. What could possibly push a mother to take the life of her own child? This question echoes in our minds as we grapple with the shocking incident involving Jalissa Baxter. I was very surprised. I was very, 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 very surprised. The man speaking is the stepfather of Jalissa Baxter, a 24-year-old now behind bars for the stabbing of her three-year-old daughter. I met her one chance, and that was in August when she came to Orlando to visit her mom. Harold Hemming saying he was married to Baxter's mother since 2018. In August, Baxter's mother was in the hospital, dying of cancer. Baxter brought her daughter with her for a visit. That day, she was just a healthy going, running her own child. Records show Baxter was sent an eviction notice just days before. She seemed like she was a loving mama, but I think at the time she needed help. She was like stressed. It's a story that shakes us to our core, a story that is as unthinkable as it is heartbreaking. Baxter has been charged with the gruesome murder of her three-year-old daughter. The charges are not mere allegations, but confessions from the mother herself. She admitted to the unthinkable act of stabbing her own flesh and blood multiple times. The child, innocent and defenseless, was found with deep stab wounds, a chilling testament to the horrific crime. The question we find ourselves asking is not just about the what, but the why. Why would a mother, a protector, become the perpetrator? What could have driven her to such an extreme act? As we delve deeper into this horrific incident, we seek to understand what could have led to such a tragic outcome. A calm 911 call reporting a murder, a mother confessing the details are chilling. She has taken the life of her own child, a young girl of just three years old. The police respond swiftly to the call, their minds swirling with the grim details relayed over the phone. Upon arrival, they are confronted with a sight that no one should ever have to witness. The child's body, bearing the cruel evidence of multiple stab wounds, lies still. The weapon, a common kitchen knife, rests nearby, an incongruous symbol of domesticity turned deadly. Baxter, the mother, the confessed perpetrator, is taken into custody without resistance. During an interview with investigators, she invokes her constitutional rights, a clear indication that she understands the gravity of her actions. Initially, she is charged with first-degree murder, the most serious of charges, reflecting the horrific nature of the crime. But then, a change. The charge is reduced to second-degree murder and felony aggravated child abuse. A subtle shift in legal terms, but one that carries significant implications. It suggests a reconsideration of the circumstances surrounding the crime, a deeper dive into the moments that led up to that fateful 911 call. And yet, despite the change in charges, one fact remains constant. A young life full of promise and potential was brutally cut short. A mother, beset by struggles we may never fully understand, stands accused of a crime that defies comprehension. The scene painted by these events is as distressing as it is baffling. As we delve deeper into this tragic story, we are left with more questions than answers. The chain of events that led to this horrifying outcome continues to unravel, revealing a tale of despair and desperation that shakes us to our core.
Beneath this horrifying act, what unseen struggles were at play? It's been reported that Jalissa Baxter, the 24-year-old mother at the heart of this tragic story, was grappling with a host of financial difficulties. The hardships she was facing were not small. Unemployment had left her without a steady income, and the threat of eviction loomed over her, casting a dark shadow on her already precarious existence. These circumstances, while distressing, are unfortunately not uncommon in today's world. Many people across the globe are struggling to make ends meet, and the stress can take a significant toll on mental health. For Baxter, these pressures may have exacerbated an already fragile mental state, culminating in an unthinkable act of violence. Diving deeper into this, it's important to consider the immense strain that financial instability can put on a person. The constant worry about how to put food on the table, how to keep a roof over one's head. These are burdens that can weigh heavily on the mind and soul. Yet, while these struggles may provide some context to Baxter's mental state, they by no means excuse or justify her actions. The pressures of life can push individuals to their breaking point, but does it justify such a heinous act? Certainly not. In the wake of such a shocking crime, what happens next? The aftermath of this horrific incident sees Jalissa Baxter, the 24-year-old mother in question, being held without bond. She's been marked as a hold for immigration, which further complicates her situation. Awaiting trial, Baxter faces charges of second-degree murder and felony aggravated child abuse. This event has sent shockwaves through the local community, leaving neighbors and residents grappling with the reality of such a tragedy unfolding in their midst. It's a stark reminder of the fragile veneer of normalcy that can shroud deep-seated issues lurking beneath the surface. On a broader scale, this incident underscores the societal implications of individuals facing severe financial difficulties and mental health issues without adequate support. It's a call to action for us all, a stark reminder that our society must prioritize mental health and provide necessary assistance to those in need. As we grapple with this unimaginable tragedy, we are reminded of the importance of mental health support and the dire consequences when it falls short.